10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition, lift off. Copy the end, Dragon One. Boys pitching down range. Now one more deep point. Telemetry nominal. At T plus 45 seconds, Falcon 9 has cleared the towers, and the final Dragon 1 flight is underway. Everything looking nominal Falcon for Falcon 9 is one. supersonic. We heard the call out that the vehicle is supersonic. Vehicle is experiencing maximum dynamic pressure. There we heard the call out for Max Q. Coming up next, there are five events that will be happening in rapid succession. Main engine cutoff, or as you'll see in the event tracker on the bottom of your screen, Miko. Uh, then stage separation, second engine start, or SES-1, followed by a boost back burn of the first stage and Dragon nose cone deploy. Main engine cutoff, or Miko, is where all nine M1D engines on first stage will shut down. This is immediately followed by stage separation, where the first and second stages will separate. A few seconds later, MVAC or the M Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage will ignite and begin to boost Dragon to low Earth orbit. And Max Hill started. So again, Miko, stage SEP, SES-1, all happening in quick su succession. Let's tune in. Stage separation confirmed. And there on the right-hand side of your screen, and by the cheers in the crowd behind me, we have visual confirmation of second engine start as that warm glow begins to build around the MVAC nozzle. On the left-hand side of your screen, we have an amazing visual of the first stage as it is performing its boost back burn. Now, this is the first of three maneuvers that the first stage will be performing. As Jesse mentioned earlier, uh, we will be landing back at landing zone one on the coast of Florida at Cape Canaveral. So the first stage has to completely reorient itself uh, and head back west. Uh, it was flying east, now it's gonna flip around, head back west towards the Cape during this boost back burn, which should be ending in five seconds. And back is looking good. Everything nominal with our temperature and power Stage readings there. And we can see on the left-hand side of our screen that the boost back burn has completed. Second stage looking good as Dragon is on its way to the International Space Station. Vehicle is on a nominal trajectory. Acquisition of signal at Bermuda. In order to make its way back to landing zone one, the first stage executes a series of three burns. The first of which you just saw uh, is the boost back burn. And as Kate mentioned, this is meant to slow the rocket down and orient it for re-entry. It also helps Falcon 9 laterally return to the landing zone. And shortly after this first burn is initiated, the grid fins, which are located near the top of the first stage, are deployed to help guide the rocket during descent. Uh, we're not showing a live view of the first stage right now because it's pretty dark, so you can't see it. Um, but what you're seeing on your screen is the second stage continuing on its way to its targeted orbit. 
So then following the boost back burn, Falcon 9 executes its reentry burn to slow itself down before hitting the dense part of the atmosphere. And then the last of the three burns is the landing burn, which begins just before touchdown, and that's to slow the vehicle down rapidly right before landing. So far, second stage is still looking good. It's T plus uh, five minutes, and the second stage is taking Dragon to its targeted orbit. We've had an on-time liftoff just a few minutes ago, and we're just about a minute away from that second burn on the first stage, uh, that entry burn. Again, if we do land our first stage tonight, it will be our 50th landing. Second Vehicle stage continues, continues to follow to look nominal, nominal trajectory. And there's that call out for nominal trajectory. If you're just now joining us, it's T plus six minutes, and we're about 30 seconds away from the first stage entry burn, which will then be followed by the landing burn and landing of the first stage uh, on our landing zone one in Cape Canaveral. So you can see on your left-hand screen, this is a view from the first stage. You can see Earth with all the lights lighting up the ground. Once that entry burn begins, we should be able to see that light up that screen on the left side. Stage one, entry burn, start up. <laughs> and there it is, entry burn has started. This burn will last about 20 seconds long. Again, as I mentioned earlier, there's those grid fins that you can see on your left-hand screen near the top of the first stage. That's guiding the vehicle entry burn to the landing zone. And there's that shutdown of that entry burn. So we're just about 40 seconds away or so from the landing burn start. The landing burn will last about 30 seconds one, before FTS the vehicle assist. touches down. Second stage is still looking nominal. And it is a bit dark since it is nighttime over there in Cape Canaveral, Stage but one, entry train we should sonic. be able to get a live view of this landing. Stage one, landing burn start up. And there's that landing burn starting. team for another successful landing. This marks our 50th successful first stage recovery, which is an important Thank part of our commitment to vehicle reusability. <laughs> a lot of excitement as we hit yet another milestone here. Uh, there's a big crowd in mission no, control no, behind me, insertion. as you probably could tell. Uh, so at this point, second stage is performing nominally. Uh, we had an on-time liftoff from Cape Canaveral, and among all the excitement, we did get the call out for a second engine cutoff. So at this point, we're waiting to hear confirmation of good orbit, um, and, second, and we do have that confirmation. So good orbit has been confirmed, and at this point, second stage has one last major task to perform, and that's to command separation of Dragon, which should be happening in less than a minute from now. Actually, hopefully just in a couple of seconds now that I'm looking at the timeline. We should have video here. There we can see a view into the dragon trunk. That is the unpressurized section. 
successfully deploying away from second stage. That unpressurized cargo is stuff that is able to be exposed to the vacuum of space. Everything that cannot endure such an environment, we pack into the pressurized section. So coming up in about two minutes, uh, we should have solar array deployment. As Jesse mentioned previously, Dragon is carrying tons of cargo to the International Space Station on this mission. A small portion of the cargo represents supplies for the astronauts, things like food and clothing. But most of the cargo represents science going up to the space station. The International Space Station serves as the world's leading laboratory for cutting edge research and technology development that will enable human and robotic exploration of destinations beyond low Earth orbit, including the moon and even Mars. There on your screen, we have a view of the second stage. Uh, that was the MVAC engine that has been shut down, obviously, as you can see. As Dragon is moving further away from our second stage, keep in mind that this is just the beginning of its two-day journey to the space station. Like I said, the next big event we'll have is solar array deployment coming up in under a minute. We'll also have Guidance Navigation Control, or GNC, door opening. But unfortunately, we won't see the GNC door opening live. But we will be able to catch solar panel deployment, which is what we're waiting to see on the left-hand side of your screen. Uh, right now, the solar arrays are compacted, uh, folded up along the side of the Dragon trunk. And that's the view that we see there on the left. As I've mentioned a couple times tonight, this is the final cargo resupply mission to the International Space Station using the first version of our Dragon vehicle. The upgraded version that we're using next has a different trunk design than the one that we're currently looking at. Uh, in the new version, oh, there we have visual confirmation of deployment of the solar arrays. As Dragon stretches its wings for the very last time, I'd like to congratulate the SpaceX and NASA teams that have designed, built, tested, and supported this spacecraft over the last decade. Your hard work has paved the way for the first Crew Dragon flight with the NASA Northwest astronauts later this year. way to the space station. Very exciting day as you can hear the crowd behind me. <laughs> Over the next couple of days, Dragon will perform a series of orbital height adjust maneuvers with its Draco engines until it's within a few kilometers of the International Space Station. Then Dragon will establish communi a communications link with the space station. And then we'll, we will perform a series of checks on the vehicle. And when both NASA and SpaceX are ready, we'll initiate a slow approach to the International Space Station, pausing at several checkpoints along the way to ensure crew safety. When Dragon is within 10 meters of the station, the astronauts aboard will capture Dragon using the station's robotic Canada arm in a, in a process called berthing. Finally, Mission Control in Houston will send commands from the ground to the station's robotic arm to rotate and install Dragon to the Harmony module. Dragon will remain at the space station until the beginning of April before returning to Earth with research and return cargo. We had an on-time liftoff from Cape Canaveral Space Launch Complex 40, a beautiful ascent and return of our first Dragon stage for the 50th time landed back. We uh, re re landed the, the Falcon 9 for the 50th time. Uh, and as you just saw on your screen, a beautiful stretching of the last solar array deployment of the first version of Dragon.